Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode five. And all I've got to say is, wow, episode five is going to be on fire. We're bringing in two brothers, Big Fridge and Little Fridge. 2003 grad David Frigiletti and 2006 grad Mark Frigiletti. And they literally defined what it meant to be a Bulldog. They were the consummate three-sport all-star athletes. They were fierce competitors. They were tremendous leaders. And best of all, they were really loyal teammates. And just to make it an extra special episode, we're bringing in our current athletic director, Pat Cauley. And Coach is going to relive some of the great memories as he had a privilege to coach both of the brothers in basketball and also had a front row seat to their development as both uh, football and baseball players. So we're going way outside the baseball bubble tonight, and we're going to dive into everything that they brought to the table. Ladies and gentlemen, episode number five is coming at you right now. Holy smokes, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's go time, and look at what a crew we've got rolling in here tonight. We've got uh, a pair of brothers that are arguably had a bigger impact than any other family in Hamburg School Athletics. And to cap it all off, we're bringing in the cleaner, Coach Cauley, to make sure that these guys are telling the truth tonight and not stretching their stories too much. But He's I leaving think already. We're going <laughs> to – it's already past his bedtime. <laughs> uh, we've got 2002 grad – uh, Dave Frigiletti. Three. 2003. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started fall. Fo senior football was 2003. He's yeah. aging with that hairline, you know. And, uh, how's um, how's the your family getting ready for Christmas? Are they all amped up and ready to go? Yeah, I mean, uh, now having a six-year-old and a two-year-old, it's it puts a puts a whole new meaning on Christmas. Um, you know, you kind of bring back the the love and the spirit of that, and they're both at ages where they know what's going on, and uh, they enjoy it, and it, it's making it really fun to be around. And uh, I can't wait. And now, especially Camden now, being two, um, he's, he's coming into his own and really getting excited now. So it uh, makes it even more fun because his big sister is loving that now also. That's awesome. That's, do, you, do you guys hide the elf at all? or? Yeah, the elf's hanging from a chandelier in my stairwell right now. Crazy <laughs> little elf. I don't know how he flew up there. <laughs> like but, uh, powers, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, the power of the elf. Don't touch him. He's, oh, Camden's no. at an age. You have to elevate. You have to elevate with the elf. Otherwise, he's a little handsy. <laughs> um, Mark, 2006 grad. Do I have that right? 2006? Yep. All right. Looks like you had a lot of decorating going on there in the bachelor pad. Yeah. Well, pretty much all of it is what you see on the fridge. And uh, I'd say 98% of that is my niece, Megan. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I told my sister-in-law the other day that I... I don't have any Camden up there, though. I need, I need some Camden on the bridge. You got to balance it out, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got a really special guest here with Coach Colley. Coach, we, we've, um, you know, obviously your connection with these two guys is, is just beyond awesome. And, and I was thinking, like, you've coached so many great athletes between your days at Sweet Home and at Hamburg. Could you kind of help paint the picture of what makes yeah. these two guys so special? Um, you know, again, it's, it's uh, as the guys were uh, alluding to, I've, I've been doing it a long time now, you know, and almost 30 years. But 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 uh, student athletes like David and Mark, they don't come along uh, very often in, a, in, a, in an educator's career. I mean, just two people that uh, you run across that really got it. They got what we were selling about uh, being a leader and being unselfish and putting the team first. And uh, they lived it. And the beauty of that is, you know, David being before Mark and David's group of guys set that legacy and it lasts, you know, especially as it, you know, it comes through to, you know, when Mark was there and even after Mark was gone, the young people that he had contact with, we could ride that for a couple more years afterwards because they, you know, they had seen what was the standard, what was acceptable. And uh, from that standpoint, uh, they were huge, influential bulldogs uh, in, in my career in our great district. Now, and you had an extra special connection with Dave as, you know, being a Cortland alum and sharing that experience and, you know, how good that football program was and specifically the, the Cortica 
drug and, and everything. Well, this oh picture, my gosh. <laughs> Tommy and Lisa's, uh, you know, bookcase. There's David scoring a touchdown against the Ithaca Bombers. And there's him with his beautiful bride when they got married. So that's, that's one that's there. So yeah. Um, well, the connection there, uh, you know, obviously that we have that bond as well. You being, you know, wearing the pur uh, wearing the red and wearing the purple, and um, yeah, you know, when he uh, alluded to the fact that he wanted to get into the profession, uh, it was a good fit, and uh, I think he'll agree that it uh, it worked out well for him. And uh, you know, Mark entertained thoughts and had some uh, feelers to go there, but where he went, he would say. That that's a great fit for him as well. So proud of both of them in that way. And, and I want to say, I will stay on Dave for one more second here. What I remember most distinctly about Dave's career myself was that great basketball team you guys had um, his senior year. And, and, and I've always been struck at how tight that group was. How, how did you as a coach start to foster that? And, and what role did Dave play in creating that? Well, it was fostered uh, before I was their coach. They had Coach Orr, who was a legendary coach uh, at our school before me. Um, and he had them when they were a little bit younger. And I, I had them in class when they are in the middle school. That was a special group, though, with David and uh, James Evans, our great point guard, who went on to play at Clarkson. Um, Ryan Collins, who his senior year was as good as anybody in basketball we've ever had. We had a tough ombre named Michael Grise that uh, him and David, boy, we would run double screen after double screen for Collins and Evans. And, you know, uh, boy, the guys, when we played them, they knew who, that they played against somebody. We also had on that team um, A.C. Costanzo, who went on to play for the Maryland Terrapins on, in lacrosse, was a sophomore. Ian Freak Marjoram, a uh, you know, who was a Mark's teammate in football that went and played um, for Robert Morris College, played on their offensive line, was a starter for two and a half years. And the, the, the thing that's interesting about David's team was um, we also had a great athlete, baseball player, Steve Stamer on that team. Yeah. And, and Steve just was, is, what a wonderful guy and a great teammate, uh, just had injury problems. And he played for us the first three ball games of the year. And it was David who tapped me on the shoulder on a ride home from an early season game at Sweet Home and said, you better go back to the back of the bus, you know, and Stephen couldn't move his arm. And that was the last we had of Stephen. And, if, you know, we had one heck of a year. We played a very difficult schedule, uh, but, but we battled that team. Uh, and, and David was uh, influential there, you know, and, and again, that, that, you know, that's when I started to develop a little bit into a real coach rather than just a crazy lunatic. <laughs> um, but, you know, our practice sessions were, the guys are laughing a little bit. Our, you know, I, I would work them very, very hard and we would, but, but that, that uh, again, that team carried us through a couple other years as we moved through, even Mark's year where maybe we didn't have the talent you know, we got to the point in those years where we were always very competitive and, you know, we were a tough out, you know, so um, that was a credit to these guys. That's it. And, and, and we'll, we'll, you know, switch kind of to Mark's era there. You know, what a glue guy, you know, the, the, the intangibles and all the dirty little things he took care of off the ball. Um, what do you remember about his career? Well, you know, Mark, you know, Mark and I would have the conversation before every game his senior year to say, okay, their best player's a guard tonight. You got to guard him. All right, the best player's a center. He's six foot five. You got to guard him. And we would put Mark on him because I knew it, it, maybe the guy was a, was a uh, more accomplished ball player, but you know, Mark was going to make him work and put him into situations where he may get frustrated and it might give us an opportunity. Um, but, but Mark was, uh, you know, was always that on all of our teams, uh, the, the football team, the baseball team, you know, um, and, and the basketball team, which he would say, if you ask him, well, that was kind of my third sport, but you would never know it from the commitment he gave us. Like he never, you know, he never, you know, there was times he had to miss certain things because, 
you know, of, of the other sports. But I think I told you this morning, Coach Hill, I mean, one day, you know, we used to play summer league in the morning back then in the summertime. And he said to me, well, I, I think I can only be there for half. I got baseball. And he's – so he comes to our game for a half for baseball. He, he's putting his baseball stuff on as he's leaving. And then he and I are in the same football workout later that night. So, you know, that uh, that's how he was. But – I guess really for these guys, I mean, it was a lot like when I grew up because, you know, we all played the three sports back then. And the, the reason we did is we didn't know anything different from that. And, and there's no way we could have possibly looked each other in the eye if in any of our teammates said, well, I'm not going to play that sport because I'm, you know, I'm better at this other one. We, 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 we couldn't have done that. And those guys, these guys had that, you know, they had that. Uh, Dave, let's, what do you remember about playing for coach and, and what kind of impact is, is he had on you? Because obviously, you know, you're now a phys ed teacher and, and you've had uh, a, a lot of coaching under your belt as well. Um, what do you remember about playing for coach? I remember intensity and just passion. Um, and just that he brought that every day. Uh, and I feel like that was, that was something that we really learned, you know, starting like he said, my crew, we played four years with Coach Orr, and that was, you know, that was part of that foundation that he started to build. And then, you know, Coach Cully just continued to, to grow that. And, um, you know, that, 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 that foundation of just passion, uh, intensity, um, and just commitment to what you're doing. And, and I felt like that was something that uh, we all really bought into. And that was, you know, one of the things that he really brought to the table in terms of his leadership. Um, and I'm telling you, it's hard to find a more passionate person about whatever it is that he's doing. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, and that rubbed off on us. And it didn't matter if it was practice, a Saturday morning. Um, we were going to go after it. And uh, I think that translated into, you know, game day as well for us. And I think that's a lot of the reason why we had so much success. That's right. Were the, were the, were the uh, trivia answer to a very interesting question in Western New York basketball? who is the last team to beat Kensington High School in a basketball game? And the answer is the Hamburg Bulldogs in an unbelievable game at that our gym. Hitting, that kid was hitting shots from behind the backboard. The, the, the young guy was named Mark Wright. And, again, that was like like I said, when Mark David was similar in that a lot of times said, look, you got to guard this guy. And I think you held him to 34, but – <laughs> Lucky he didn't get 36 because he had the last shot and uh, we won it. But when, you know, it, it may not mean nothing to our young guys or even, you know, uh, you know, uh, even as far back as David's guys, but Kensington High School has as good a basketball tradition as anybody in Buffalo history, you know, going back to the 40s, 50s, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I do see their coach from time to time and I always got to let it remind him that, you know, who was the last team. Uh, but you know what their coach says about that game was that that was just an unbelievable high school basketball game, you know, and, uh, you know, we, you know, uh, when these guys were there, boy, we'd get the crowds because uh, we, you know, we, we, we never ducked anybody schedule wise. And, um, you know, we'd get into some heated games, mm -hmm. you know, there was some fun ones uh, when we played against my, uh, you know, my, my brother, my best friend, uh, coach Shentz. Uh, and his teams, uh, you know, the refs should have probably got paid double those days, Coach Hill, you know, uh, maybe more. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but we I had some games. I think some of that, I think some of that excitement that drew crowds out for those was just a, a reflection of, of who we were top to bottom. I mean, everybody knew that it didn't matter who we were playing. It was going to be a battle. It was going to be a war out there. And uh, we were going to get after it and leave it all on the court every night. And, um, you know, that, that, that translated pretty well for us most of the time. We you fun. guys were worth the price of admission, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Mark, what, what do you remember about playing for Coach? Well, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback off of what Dave said, and, you know, that there, there's not many people out there with the same intensity and passion for anything that they're, they're diving into. You know, there's, there's one guy that I can kind of – put in that same type of category and, and he's on here as well, Coach Hill. I mean, when you talk about just diving into anything and everything, whatever it is that he chooses, whether it's showing his cows or AP calculus or, or baseball, it doesn't matter. But, um, you know, Coach Cawley obviously had it. He brought it every single day. 
you know, and I, that was, I think it reflected in our teams. You know, I think we started to take that on and, you know, you know, no bones about it. Our practices were not easy. You know, there were days where we, we busted our butts and it was hard. And, um, but come game day, you know, I think we were prepared for that. Um, you know, as coach Colley mentioned earlier in the, in the, in the meet here, uh, you know, my senior year, we weren't necessarily the most talented, and and I might even we were inexperienced. I was going to say, you I might not even say the most another talented. guy, I'd say not the most experienced. We were, you know, I was one of two seniors. We had, I think, four sophomores and a freshman on the team that were all big time players. And you know, I think uh, how he prepared us from you know starting with our scrimmage on a Riverside where we dunked on about. 35 times by, by Mike Williams, who ended up being an NFL wide receiver, um, right off the opening tip, in fact. But, you know, by the end of the tip play against us, Dave. game out of McKinley where, you know, our, our last game of the year, you know, we – people around Western New York would have said we had no business being in the gym with them, and we took it right down to the wire. The, and on, yeah, that's, that's one that still eats it. We had a shot. We had our shot there. We did, you know, and, uh, and we were right there, and I think – Uh oh, froze up for a second. We we lost him. We'll have to come back to him. Yeah. Well, but you can you can hear us, Derek. Yeah, I still got you. You um, know what, what David and Mark said though. Okay. Um, uh, oh, we we lost you for a second there. No. <laughs> okay. You're back. But but what they were saying about passion, I used to apologize to people for passion to have passion, but don't ever apologize. And I, and I want our young people to know, don't ever apologize to anybody for having passion for something. My passion, maybe back then at times was a little misguided. Okay. Um, and that was part, part of how I was brought up and where I was brought up and how I was brought up. But um, no, you know, you got to have passion in this life and um, you know, n n never apologize for it. Never. Well, I hear about it from the other end, according to uh, my wife, who I, I hate to admit it was a Frontier Falcon. Uh, I don't know if I can even say that. At least she didn't go to Ithaca. Yeah, hey, that's right. She didn't go to IC. That's right. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you were just the crazy guy coaching from the bench that's stomping his foot and screaming and yelling the whole game, according to her and my mother-in-law. And some, some, of their, some of their recollection of the story, it, it, it's quite comical to hear sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm proud of something. Some of that stuff. Passion. You know, passion. you know, but, but you learn, you learn, you know, you learn um, how to channel your passion and have the same effect without. But we loved you know, it. We, we fed off of that too, that energy. Oh, no, it did. And there was a, there was, a, there was such a connection because again, me uh, getting to know, guys as they as they walked into the middle school and even before that with some of the programs that we had i mean mark had it difficult because you know me and everybody else in the schools could say if he made a mistake well david would never have done that <laughs> david made a mistake here and there but you know but mark you know but i i was the same though you know in my situation growing up i had brothers that came before me and you were held to that standard and mark did Mark, Mark met the standard and, uh, you know, was, was, uh, again, we, we, we were able to run our programs for several years after they left because the kids that they came into contact knew this is the standard you got to meet or else, you or else don't come around, you know? And, um, boy, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Coach, I'll, I'll tell you, the one thing I'm hearing here, and I, and I think that's what gets me fired up, is you've obviously modeled this idea of being a lifelong learner, the idea that you're getting better every single day. It's something you've passed on to me, Mark, and Dave. Um, that's just, I think that's what fires us up more than anything. Uh, I'm coming back pretty soon, and I, and I think I have an idea now of what I'm doing when I'm going to uh, coach. Well, I, and know. the other thing I'll say, if I, if I may jump in here, I mean, you know, I know I got caught off there for a, for a minute. Um, but, you know, one of the things that, that coach did always, you know, he could be hard on you day in, day out for two, two and a half hours of practice. Sometimes I think four for me, because I was double dipping with JV. Yeah, and Bar time. There were only nine guys on varsity, but 
you know, he might get on you and, and he demanded a lot of you, but at the end of the day, you always knew he cared about you. Yeah. And, you know, he showed that. And, and I think that shows in the fact that, you know, we're sitting here with him right now today. Um, you know, we have a personal relationship still, you know, in our thirties with him because of what he did for us uh, as, as high school athletes. But you, and, you, you guys, know, you, you, never you guys did as much for me. You know, um, and, and that, that went from just going to watch college football games at his house with the team. You know, he'd, him and Lisa would have us over for lunch and watch games or going out to Duff's and seeing how many wings we could crush or going, going to a movie with the team. You know, it didn't matter what it was. <clears throat> you know, there was always something that <clears throat> he, would, he would do to, you know, to, to make sure that he, you knew, hey, I'm going to be hard on you, but at the end of the day, you're my guy. You know, I, I care about all of you. And that, I think that's sometimes, unfortunately, rare. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, you guys say that, but, you know, you guys, and really all the guys that I run into, you know, not I'm not as close with all the guys I taught and things like that the, as, as the guys that uh, were in the inner circle that we were really in it together. But I see guys, uh, you know, a lot that I run into that might have just been in gym class and everything like that. And I tell them the same you guys are all a part of me and, and, and Lisa, the guys on the team, because um, you guys gave to me, uh, you know, so much, the opportunity to coach and to, to uh, you know, to, to, to be in it. I mean, we were both, you know, we've all been in that locker room after that game. When you win that game and you, if, if you could buy, if we could bottle and sell the feeling that you have, after you win that game, oh, man, you know, I mean, it's it, – you chase that the rest of your life, man. You chase it the rest of your life, that feeling. And really what you're saying in that game when you get into that locker room is, look what we accomplished together. You know, that's what makes it so, you know, intoxicating, you know. Um, you know, and it's, and it's equally as – as as draining when you don't win it but really in those games when you don't win it you should feel the same way because that's what competition is you gave everything you know david played in a game down at buffalo state you know again against sweet home and we had some great ones against him that we didn't get that you know i still can't watch i still can't watch it you know because we put so much into it and we but you know the, the, you know our players listen and you got it we got to fin you got to finish you know, you got you can't get to the finish. You got to finish. You got to get over the hump. And it was just a game we didn't. And they were great. The other team was really, really good. That was another part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Well, coach, I wanna, we're going to give you a chance to empty your pockets here, and um, before we before we uh, lose you. But what's give me try to identify one trait that these boys had that you could magically inject into our all our future bulldogs. What, what would you take from these guys and pass on? you know walk the walk or talk the talk and walk the walk yeah. and both guys both of these guys did it you know they you know they were able to set it a, an example for their teammates with the way they handled their business the way they treated people uh, the way they worked every day the way they put the team first um they were authentic they were themselves and they did it you know again i i think i shared a couple stories with you one um about david was um not the one in lackawanna we'll save that one but um <laughs> well, so you, know, that, behind closed uh, doors. you know david uh, we're playing again in a heated game at the gym heated friday night it happens to be sweet home again which again we had some we had some unbelievable games against them um but we're playing it gets late in the game david gets hit in the face with blood everywhere he's got to go out of the game we're coming down to the end. It's anybody's game. And I get a tap on my shoulder and it's, I look over and he's got, you know, he's got this face mask on taped to his face and he says, he's ready to go. I said, well, get in there then. You know what I mean? And I mean, you know, we got in there and, and we end up winning the game, you know? So um, that's how it was. And, you know, Mark, you know, uh, who uh, it was not Josh Allen running the football as much as he would hate to admit that because he has this Josh Allen thing. But, you know, um, he played in some games. 
at that time, we had a run against uh, football games against Iroquois that both these guys were involved in. And one after the next was just, you know, outstanding football game. And Mark's senior year, when we won our division, you know, we had a third and long late in the game on a hot day before Iroquois had lights. And, uh, you know, he's in the pocket and uh, I can't see him anymore. I don't know what's going on, but he breaks free and runs through somebody, get the first down, we finish the game, you know, and uh, my niece's uh, friends are, you know, she went to Iroquois and th their team still talks about it. That well, boy, we had him, you know, and we didn't think he had that kind of escapability, but it wasn't escapability. He refused to lose, you know, and he was going to do whatever he could for his teammates to get the job done. And that's, uh, you know, that's what we had in the Frigilettis. And you can go back to their parents. Their parents are wonderful, wonderful people that were always supportive um, and, uh, you know, raised wonderful children along with their sister. That's awesome stuff. Well, Some better than others, but. <laughs> that's... No, not everybody can go to Coral State, David. <laughs> not everybody's a red dragon. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for jumping in with us tonight, Coach. This was extra special, and um, and we'll hope to sneak in on some more future episodes. Well, I don't want you, you – you let the guys uh, go here, and uh, I just want to let the guys on our programs coming through, you know, how important this stuff is. And, uh, you know, you can <clears> – that you can leave a legacy here, you know, like, uh, like these guys did, and uh, – you know, and, and again, we, we, you know, once you're a bulldog, you're always a bulldog. So let's do it the right way. Amen. Bro. All right. So you guys know I go to bed early these days. So <laughs> I'm going to go watch the end of the college basketball games. You guys have fun. I love you guys. I uh, love you, Coach. Right, I'll see you man. guys later. Talk to you soon. Later. Holy smokes. That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, so how about this, Dave? Help us uh, bring us up to date. So you graduate in 03. Yep, to Cortland. Talk to us a little bit about that experience and then exact how in the world did you land in Maryland and then introduce us to the family? So uh, graduated 03 and, you know, wasn't sure really where I wanted to end up. And when I started looking and trying to figure out that phys ed was really the, the angle that I wanted to head, um, you know, and after consulting with a, a lot of, you know, guys that I really looked up to and they were mentors to me and um, you know, that, that's still I'm um, close with this day and looked at Brockport and upon uh, Coach Chafee's recommendation and, you know, and look, look at the Red Dragons upon Coach Cully's and, and, you know, started to narrow it down a little bit. And I realized that just uh, Cortland just seemed like the right fit, fell in love with it um, and uh, couldn't see myself anywhere else at that point in time. And uh, boy, what a good decision that was. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, be on the football team for five years after redshirting as a freshman. And um, so I got that fifth year, uh, got that fifth year of eligibility and was uh, able to play and get my master's degree done um, right away in one shot. And uh, that was part of what helped me get, uh, get hired uh, right out of college. And, um, you know, I was fortunate that uh, my wife also uh, now, who was my girlfriend at the time who I met at Cortland, um, didn't know each other, even though she was a, a, a Hamburg, a Hamburg resident and a, and a Frontier alum. Didn't meet her till we, until we became Red Dragons. Um, but uh, we ended up uh, doing a job fair, and we both got hired in uh, Calvert County, Maryland, uh, right after we got our master's degree. And we've been down here now in Calvert County, which is uh, right on Chesapeake Bay, about an hour southeast of Washington D.C. And we've been down here for now. This is our 13th year teaching. Wow. All at the same school. We ended up getting hired at the same high school somehow. I'm still not sure how that one worked out. And uh, after a couple of years of uh, coaching football and coaching baseball, um, I have now transitioned into uh, coaching, my, coaching my daughter in t-ball or helping out in soccer or running her back and forth to dance uh, as she's now at that age and uh, really into it. And so my daughter Megan's in first grade and then uh, – my son Camden's now two, and he's just, he's an animal. It's, uh, he, he's, he's, he's cut from a different cloth, and he, he is ready to roll every day. So, uh, linebacker in the making. He's a linebacker in the making. No, no. <laughs> he's a bruiser. So, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been real fun. And um, just uh, the, 
never imagined myself moving out of Western New York, out of Buffalo area whatsoever. Um, it just, my wife was looking to go somewhere warmer and we gave it a shot. She said, give it a year. Let's see what happens. Right. And here we are, you know, 13 years later, raising our family down here in Southern Maryland and, uh, you know, miss home, miss the Buffalo area, miss people. But, uh, you know, we're, we're putting down roots here now and uh, we really fall in love with it. That's awesome. Yeah, we, you know, we had that chance to come down a few years ago with our ball club and hang out with you guys. And, uh, you know, just the short time we were there, it was easy to tell that it was a really special community. Um, and I had a lot in common with Hamburg. Um, yep. basically all the good things about Hamburg plus amazing crab cakes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a lot, lot, lot of waterfront. Hey, you got, you got to take advantage of the seafood down here. That's that right. is for sure. And that was, what a fun, what a fun trip that was. That was, uh, having, having you all down here and my former coaches and my alma mater and my brother down here coaching. And, uh, I just told my boys in the dugout, I said, don't you let me lose to my brother. Cause I will never hear the end of it. <laughs> we, we, we had a pretty good ball club that year and, and, and you guys laid it on us pretty good. So we, we left Maryland limping a little bit. Yeah. Well, hey, if you notice, he, he resigned shortly after cause he, he didn't want to give us that chance of redemption. You know, that's, that's the real reason why he stopped. Good. I want another six years. <laughs> Mark, Mark, why don't you bring us up to date? talking about is your, your journey to Baldwin Wallace and um, up to the current date now. Well, uh, you know, go figure and another, another phys ed teacher. Um, you know, I, I feel like I was one of the lucky people who, who knew no doubt what I wanted to do. Um, I just didn't know exactly where I wanted to go to, to do it. Um, and I, I knew I wanted to go into phys ed. It was a passion of mine. Uh, I knew I wanted to coach. Um, and, you know, I, I was looking at a lot of the same schools that Dave was with Cortland and Brockport. Um, and, and I ended up looking out of state as well at a couple. Uh, John Carroll and right at the bottom of my list was some school that I had never heard of, Baldwin and Wallace. Uh, you know, my dad kind of pointed me in that direction. Hey, you should check this out. You know, it's, it's a good school out of Cleveland. I knew nothing about it. So just kind of by default, I, had, you know, I, Cortland was familiar you know, Dave was there. I had been there to, to watch him play, saw what the football program was all about. And, and, you know, I think there was a certain comfort level there. So by default, they kind of took that number one spot on my list of where I was really kind of hoping to go. Um, and as I went through my visits, um, you know, Cortland was kind of remaining at that top spot. And, you know, the, the situation there didn't sound quite as attractive, though, um, from a football standpoint. Uh, you know, and I kept, kept going, my, you know, keep, keeping my options open, uh, took my visits, and eventually got down to Baldwin-Wallace. And, you know, I, to, this is kind of a funny story. To, to sidetrack a little bit here, my first recruiting visit that, that was scheduled, I was headed down with my dad uh, early one morning during the week, and we get down just outside the Ripley exit. So just before we cross the Pennsylvania border and the transmission blows in his vehicle. And I end up calling up Coach Snell from Baldwin Wallace. Hey, Coach, I know I'm scheduled to, to get down there today. Car trouble, can't get down. And here I am thinking this might be a bad sign. Maybe I'm not meant to go there. And, you know, I think for a while I had my reservations just because it was unfamiliar. I didn't know a single person who, who went to Baldwin Wallace. Um, and... You know, I, I finally got down there for a recruiting visit eventually and immediately was just blown out of the water. Um, they immediately jumped my list right to the top. And, um, you know, I was just so impressed by everything that, that the coaches did, the campus, just, just all of it together as a whole. Um, it really just really impressed me. I remember how impressed my dad was sitting there with me saying, wow, this, this place is really something special, you know? And for whatever reason, I think, I think probably looking back, it was just a comfort thing, not knowing anybody there. I still had my reservations. And I, I remember to this day, I don't know if you remember this, but you and I, Coach Hill, we were up in the weight room and we were having a conversation about it. And I think you sensed that little bit of hesitation. And I remember you saying to me, you know, it doesn't matter where you go, whichever place you end up within that first semester, first year, you're going to make it yours. You're going to make it your own school. You're going to find your own friends. You're going to, you're going to have your teammates. You're going to make it yours. And that 
was enough to give me that push to say, you know what, I love everything else about this place. I'm going. I'm giving it a chance. And, you know, hey, four great years there later, um, you know, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. So um, that really, that really kind of gave me that, that push to say, you know, take a chance and get outside of my comfort zone and go someplace where I didn't know anybody. And, you know what, I, I'm, I'm glad you gave me that push because I wouldn't have traded it. So, That's um, you know, moving past that, you know, I, I, I've been lucky enough, you know, I, I'm in my eighth year of teaching now. Um, third year at Hamburg, spent, spent, you know, kind of paid my dues, Catholic school, charter school, did what I had to do to, to get into the public school system. And, and luckily enough, I ended up at Hamburg. Um, you know, at, at that time, I would have taken a public school job just about anywhere, I think. But, um, you know, now, three years later, man, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, and, and getting a chance to, for everything to kind of come full circle, um, getting to coach baseball with, you know, starting out with, with Coach Chafee and you, um, and, and Coach Chafee obviously has since stepped away from it, but um, getting to be a part of that with my former coaches, um, same thing with the football program, jumping in there and getting a chance to coach with my former coaches and kind of working my way up. Um, and, and you know what, I wouldn't trade it for a thing, wouldn't trade it for a thing. We're, we're building some big things, that's for sure. We're cooking, man. <laughs> we got- Funny thing when you mentioned Chafee, I- I remember when the boys were born. That's what, I was playing yeah. when that happened. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I, I'm, I'm dating myself here now a little bit, but uh, I'll tell you, they're getting big. They're getting real big. <laughs> fun to watch. The um, my gosh, I I got so many questions for you guys, and and we may have to turn this into a you know episode part two, episode part three, but. Um, yeah, you guys were such tremendous three sport athletes and, and, and coach helped, you know, kind of paint the picture from the basketball side. Um, and, and, and Dave, I missed, you know, such a huge part of your career. I kind of snuck in there at the last second, just before you graduated. Um, but I think you had, you were with coach Chafee for several years. I, did he, did he do modified and then yeah. you guys jumped to JV and then jumped to varsity. Um, talk to us about playing for coach Chafee and, and what that group was like. Oh man, fun. Yeah. Fun. That, and that was, that was one thing I always remember about Chafee. It's just fun. He made the game fun. He made practices fun. Um, he made everything about the program fun. He was the kind of guy that you just wanted to play for. Um, you know, he, he'd crack down on you when he needed to, but man, he just, you know, he made everybody just love being around there. And that just raised the level of effort and uh, from everyone and the intensity from there. Um, so, you know, different, different approach than a, a coach Cully, um, but same results and just knows how to push the right buttons at the right time. And um, I was fortunate enough to be able to play, as you said, I, I had him as a coach in modified level, then had him again at the JV level and then had him again. Uh, I'm sorry, no, modified and then had him at the varsity level. Okay. And I had him at the JV level also. I had him all, yeah, I had him at all three levels at some point. Yes. So, and uh, what an experience and how lucky I was to have somebody like him, you know, bring me all the way up through. That's funny. I, I guess one of the things I remember about that group is kind of the, of course, the, the what if factor. What if everybody had stayed healthy? Um, I think we could make the argument that it might have been the most talented group in school history. I mean, it was an unbelievable senior class. Um, what made that class so special besides just talent, though? Man, we were, eh, we were close. We really were. I mean, we were so tight knit. Um, and I think that that speaks volumes, just that, that, that closeness that we had and having each other's backs and that trust factor. Um, and I think that was a really huge factor. Um, but also, we all worked at it. You know, it wasn't something we weren't just all blessed with God given ability and just you know, lucky and just, you know, took that for granted, went up through. It was something that we all, we put in our dues. We put, we put you know, the, the effort, the practice, the work, the, the training outside of the season, um, you know, the summer league, all that stuff, the travel ball, everything that we did went into that culmination. And, you know, you look at some things that, hey, the what ifs, you know, and, and you can you kill yourself, you know, thinking about all the what ifs and, you know, you beat yourself down thinking about all that. But, um Man, just some of the talent, you know, you talk about a guy like a Stamer, uh, Steve Stamer, you know, with the, his ability to pitch and, 
just the overall talent that he had and the unfortunate arm issues that in, ended up impacting him in all three sports, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, you look at a guy like that, how he, he's a guy that could have changed the course of, uh, you know, a whole season, you know, by himself. A guy like that, you know, you're not touching a guy like that on the mound. Um, you know, so you, things like that, the injuries, but, you know, we, we fought through that. We never leaned on that. We never used that as a crutch. And, you know, other guys took it as an opportunity to step up. And uh, we just tried to make the most of it. But no matter who it was or who, who was in at that moment, um, we all backed them and we all just kind of leaned on each other in those moments. That's awesome. And I, I got to confess, like, you know, that was, you know, that, that was my first experience at Hamburg. And I remember thinking, like, holy crap, if, if this senior class is really what Hamburg's all about, I, I think I'm in, like, heaven here, you know? <laughs> like, I, like, I might have just landed in the best school in the world here. Um, Mark, we'll fast forward to, to your group. And I thought, you know, as the program started to turn the corner and Coach Chafee started laying the foundation for, for what it is now, um, I think your group was really a huge, like a really pivotal group. Um, wh what do you remember about your group and how you guys helped, you know, elevate that program to the next level? You know, I, I think, uh, I think work ethic comes into play. That's a big one for me. You know, I think, you know, we were, we were kind of before the time of doing a lot of different off season stuff where, where, off season was a big thing for every sport, but uh, I know you and Coach Chafee kind of started laying that foundation for that that off season work. Then I remember coming into more uh, in mornings uh, during the winter. Uh, we that was I think the beginning of our weight program. Granted, I, I don't think we knew what the heck we were doing yet. We were just in there throwing some weights around, but you know, very different from what we're doing now. But you know, I think still it it kind of set that groundwork for for what we were supposed to do you know maybe we weren't doing all the right things but we were putting in the time we were putting in the effort and I think when you when you commit to that and you're committing during the off season and you're committing in the morning before school you know you know what you've put into it and when you get to that game time that practice time there's no way you're gonna you know just go go 50 percent or 75 percent you know what you put into it and you're not going to let anything fall short. You're going to leave it all out there on the field. Um, you know, I think we had a great group. Um, you know, I, probably not as talented as what Dave's group were or was. Um, definitely not as talented as some of the groups I've, I've now gotten the privilege to coach. But, um, you know, I think that work ethic was there. And I think we were probably just a little bit crazy enough, dumb enough, whatever it was to – to think, you know what, hey, I don't care who we're playing, we can beat whoever we play, you know, and it really didn't matter to us, you know, put us against anybody, and we're going to go out there, and we're going to play hard, and, you know, there's, we're going to be yelling dumb stuff to each other, we're going to be having fun on the bench, and I think that was, I think it was just a fun atmosphere that kind of helped us play loose and just, you know, put our best, best baseball out there. That's for sure. That's, that's a good way to describe that group. We didn't know any better. You know, we'd have played yeah. anybody, anywhere, anytime. Yeah. We were just crazy enough. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got one more question for each of you, and then we'll, we'll switch gears to our lightning round. Um, but, and, and Mark, we'll start with you. Growing up the younger brother, you know, what, what was that like, you know, being a few years younger than Dave and watching his career evolve into what it did and watching that group of players you know, what did you admire about them? Well, I mean, first of all, I think we all probably could take a guess who, who was winning all the battles in there. I mean, obviously not the older brother. I, no. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it was, it was fun. It was, it was intense, uh, you know, but, you know, from the time we were little kids, we were, we were out there playing football, hockey, baseball, whatever it was in the driveway. And, you know, at the time, I, I maybe didn't appreciate it like I do now. But, you know, he, he really didn't shy away from me at all. The only time he really shied away was when he was actually mad at me because he knew how much damage he'd actually do. But when we were just screwing around, he didn't hold back. Um, and I attribute a lot of my athletic success and just overall success to that. You know, it, it, it gave me an edge. Um, you know, there was no way I was going to back down from him. So when I got going against people my own age and my own size, you know, I, I feel like I was a step ahead because – you know, I was used to going against somebody that was, you know, a couple inches taller, you know, 20 pounds heavier, a couple years older. And, um, you know, I think that really um, 
kind of made me the competitor that I became, um, that I, that I still am today as a coach now. But you know, that, that gave me that, that feeling of, you know what, I don't care who I'm going against. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go after him as hard as I can. And I'm not taking, I'm not going to take a loss. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, go do whatever I have to. And I know coach Colley alluded to it earlier. You know, he might put me on the biggest dude on the floor and I was way outsized, but I'm going to do something to try to, to get under their skin. You know, even if I, uh, you know, something maybe a little bit outside the rules, just <laughs> throwing a couple levels, get a guy teed up. Hey, you do what you got to do. Um, but you know, where I, I think it really, really helped me, you know, obviously throughout, throughout our childhood, but I, I remember going into my freshman year of college, um, you know, and again, I, I had been on weight programs for football, for baseball, but there was really no real rhyme or reason to what we were doing. We were just in there throwing weights around. We didn't really know any better what we were doing, but uh, that, that summer, Dave was going into his, I think, true senior year, right? Is that correct, Dave? Retro, retro junior year, I believe. Yes. Retro junior year. And so we, you know, we had the summer together where, you know, we worked out and I was here, I was a skinny little senior in high school, just graduating, thinking I'm going to Ohio where like that's, they eat and sleep football. I mean, this is what they do <laughs> in Ohio is football. Like I got to go in there and I got to get bigger. I got to get stronger. I got to get faster. And, and we went to the gym every morning together, um, went to the track after the run. And I can tell you right now, that was the best shape I've ever been in in my life you know, not only just because we were working together and, you know, we were on a, on a good program, but, you know, for me as a little brother, you know, I, I want to beat him out. I want to outlift him. I want to outrun him. I want to, and it didn't always happen. Didn't happen often, but when it did, believe me, he knew about it. He heard about it. Um, there were times, I don't, I don't care about your, your knee injury. <laughs> I don't want that as an excuse, <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it, it pushed me. Um, I'd like to think that I, it, it pushed him as well to, to not let me, surpass him but you know having that definitely made me the competitor that I am you know that I was as a player and still am as a coach that's awesome um and, and Dave we'll flip the script a little bit you know and I don't know how much you got a chance to come home and see him you know um while you were at college was there ever a moment when you came home to see him and said oh wow he he's gotten pretty good <laughs> he's pretty good at what he does yeah, and to be honest with you, I think I only made it home for one. Yeah. Um, and I think because we were always on the road or we had our own, um, you know, we were game day preparations. And unfortunately, that, that prevented me from being able to catch any of his. Um, I know he was able to catch a lot more of mine, just, uh, you, know, you know, the nature of playing on Saturdays and yeah. his games mostly on Friday nights. Um, but I, I was able to make it home for one when, uh, when a bye week lined up and I was able to sneak home. And uh, it was over at uh, Lakeshore. And I drove in and got in that evening and made it just to the game, just in the nick of time. And that was the first time I had seen him play live at that level. And, you know, it was, it was nice to see how much he had grown and developed. And it was, you know, it was making sense to me why he was getting some, getting some press clippings and things like that. I was like, oh, okay, all right it's not just him talking it up. Like, you know, we heard he likes to do a little bit. All right. It wasn't just him yakking himself up. This is, this is legit. And uh, at that moment I was like, okay, he, he's going to be able to play at the next level if he wants to. And, um, you know, it was fun to be able to get back and see him. And I wish I could have gotten to see more. Um, and, uh, you know, that was something when he started looking at going to Cortland, I, I, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. You know, we didn't, we missed out on an opportunity in, in high school being able to, be on the same field and him being a quarterback and me being a tight end, being all catch a pass from him. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I would have loved that opportunity at the next level even more. Um, but it just, you know, it didn't work out and he ended up going his direction and I was in mine and, you know, and, and it all worked out for the best. Uh, but that's something that, you know, I always thought about that that would have been really cool. And uh, unfortunately it never worked out that way. Yeah. That's, um, that's pretty cool, man. All right, we're we're gonna try to wrap it up with our with our lightning round, but it really doesn't. It's not that lightning. They don't have to be fast or anything. Um, but um, we'll start with Dave. Um, what advice would you give to your high school self if you could turn back the clock? Oh man, what advice would I give? Uh, just live in the moment. Um, there's so much that I look back at now. Um, just the brotherhood, the 
the relationships that I built, the mentors that I had. And I feel like sometimes you take that for granted uh, and, and what you truly have in front of you and what you enjoy. And then you blink and it's gone just like that. And, um, you know, we all, every, you know, life moves on and that happens. But, uh, you know, those are some of the best moments of my life. And, you know, just live in that moment, never take it for granted and enjoy every second of it because, uh, you know, the time is short and before you know it, it's, it's not going to be there anymore. That's good. Mark, how about you? I, th I think just, just cherish every second that you have because, you know, unfortunately you don't know when it, when it ends, you know, but maybe, maybe high school's all, all that you have, uh, you know, in your athletic career and you're not going to play at the next level. Maybe, you know, I, unfortunately we talked about it with a couple of Dave's teammates, you know, injuries, you don't know when it happens. Yeah. Um, you know, and I know that my college career got cut short by that, you know, going into my senior year, had an injury and, wanted to play, tried to do it, and it just wasn't going to, wasn't going to happen. Um, so you, you just never quite know when that that's going to end. So cherish every second of that because, you know, you don't know when, when that's the last snap you're going to take or the last step bat you're going to have or your last jump shot. Um, and just, you know, those moments with your teammates, with your brothers, I mean, there, there's nothing that replaces that. And, and I don't care if we're talking in game or practice or, when you're busting your butt in in 80 degree weather on a on a Wednesday morning in the summer, you know when when you're thinking, man, this this is terrible. I'm dying. It's worth it, you know. And, and when you see when you work together with a group like that, and you are you're with your teammates putting in that that hard work, and you know they're right there beside you, you know that's the stuff you're gonna remember, you know. And that that putting that hard work in together, that's what builds those relationships with each other uh, because you're you're going through something together. And, you know, I, I think, you know, there's nothing that beats that. And, you know, to anybody who's going through right now, I, I think I would just say, you know, do as much as you can with, with those guys while you, while you have the opportunity, because you don't know when that opportunity has gone. And you know what, right now in the moment, you might think it stinks and it's hard, but looking back on it 10 years, 15 years later, you know, there's a lot harder things in life and, and I would give anything to go back to those, some of those moments where we were thinking, man, this is, this is tough, you know, but it's worth it. You know, it's worth it all the way. So worth it. Um, Mark, who's, who's a player that you played with? And it, it could be any of the sports, football, basketball, baseball. Who's a, who's a guy you played with that was under the radar, didn't get uh, maybe the attention or played a bigger role than outside people realized. Oh boy. Um, Geez, let me think for a second here. Uh, you know, I'd have, I'd have to say, um, I, and I guess I got two in mind, and, and some might say that he wasn't totally under the radar, but, um, you know, the first one I'm going to say is Alex Herman. Um, he was my left tackle for three years. Um, and, it, and I guess you could say he got some recognition, but not to the extent that I ever felt that he probably should have. You know, we had some linemen that came through that, you know, we're in those all Western New York talks, trench trophy talks, and he never quite got that. Um, but I'll tell you what, man, he, he did a heck of a job for three years there at that position. Um, you know, he really, he was unbelievable. I mean, he just, he was nasty. He was tough. He was physical. Uh, he was not going to let anybody get at one of his teammates, whether it was a running back, a receiver, or, or myself. Um, he took pride in that. And, and if he did fail on, on a play, which was very rare, you know, he, he took it personally. Um, and so him for one, um, the other one, and this is, I use this to this day still with, with our baseball guys, um, you know, Anthony Gurel, uh, who I know you'll know, yeah. this kid got cut as a seventh grader, got cut as an eighth grader, got cut as a ninth grader. The kid didn't know, like, didn't know when to quit. He just, you know, it's like, as a, as a coach, the, the coaches are probably thinking, man, will you just, like, I'm sick of cutting you. Like, I'm feeling bad. I'm sick of cutting you. You're getting cut every year. Finally makes it as a sophomore, really doesn't play much on JV. Makes it as a junior. It doesn't play much early on. Ends up late in the year in a, in a really pivotal game for our season. Uh, put, comes up late in the game, lays down a, a bunt that was supposed to be a sacrifice, and he ends up getting on base, reaching safely, and moves the runner. And it ends up turning into a big win for us. And he kind of set the groundwork for that win. Um, you know, fast forward to the final year of his career, 
you know, and suddenly he is all league center fielder for us, first team. Um, and I know you can, I, I mean, I can think of specific catches that he made one early in the year out of Amherst where I'm telling you, it, it was about as good a catch as I've ever seen from an outfielder where he was full extension, full body off the ground, makes an unbelievable play running to, uh, to the right, uh, left center gap. Um, and then an even bigger catch, uh, I know you'll remember this one out in Pioneer, um, with Blake McClyman's on the mound as, as a sophomore trying to close out the game for us. And they put one out there, and, and anybody who's ever played out at that town park in Pioneer knows that there's not a fence, there's, there's a, a rope. <laughs> but if it lands, hits the road in the air, it's a home run. And, you know, I see I'm catching, and I see this ball go off the bat, and I'm like, oh, no. That's, that's game. I'm thinking it's game over. It's the bottom of the seventh. And I see Blake's head turn around over his shoulder and everybody's just kind of holding their breath. And Anthony's back there tracking it and somehow makes this catch falling back onto the, onto the road and, you know, saves the game and sends us to the next round of the playoffs. Um, just never really quite got that recognition. And you know what? the work ethic for him and the, the, Ability to say, yeah, all right, I got cut. I'm coming back anyways. It's just unbelievable. He was fearless. He was fearless in the outfield. I've never seen anybody. I mean, he was excited to run through brick walls. Like, that was like he thrived on that. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, how about you? Who was underrated? Um, I, got, I also got two in mind. And uh, the first one is Jeff Nye. And Jeff Nye, you know, he's a – the, the, the nine name is a uh, Hamburg legend. So we, we know, we know many of them, but uh, Jeff was one of those guys that, um, you know, never got much time on in, in uh, game days always. Uh, but man, was he such a pivotal role in all of our teams when he got his opportunities, he maximized it, mm -hmm. uh, hitting big three pointers or, you know, he was always like another coach, um, you know, in terms of on the sideline and what a teammate. I mean, he would work his tail off every day, um, leadership, and uh, he was somebody that, you know, kind of flew under the radar in terms of what he meant to um, so many of us within uh, the school and within our teams. And um, he was somebody I felt like really flew under the radar, but really influential in keeping us together and, and such a huge reason why we were so close. Um, and then the other one was James Evans. Um, you know, and again, you could argue that he didn't really fly under the radar. I mean, uh, he was the point guard on the on the basketball team, but uh, at the same time, he, you know, quiet, you know, in a sense where he wasn't going to be a real flashy uh, player or anything like that. But um, you know, he always he was the glue. Uh, James James was the glue. You know, he was the one that always kept us close. He was the one that always motivated us. He always found a positive twist to everything. Um, you know, in baseball field, on the basketball court, whatever. And, uh, and it just, he was really uh, somebody that I thought that again, just with his leadership and uh, is just that, that, that just the glue to our teams and keeping, keeping guys together. I thought he was real pivotal. He was so yeah. steady and consistent. Yes. It just, uh, yes, just, you know, never let, never let the emotions get too high or too low. He just kind of even keel really in, but he could, he could bring it and let you know when he needed to, but then, you know, most of the time just really even keeled and, uh, Something to be said about that. That's outstanding. So, uh, uh, cool. Dave, when you do get a chance to come back and visit, what's your go-to place to go out and eat? Ooh. Well, I mean, for whatever reason, you can't you can't find any good pizza and wings south of the Mason Dixon line. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> it's the one thing that, that just kills me. So, uh, any place really. I don't know if I have one. I mean, living, living in Boston, New York, where my mom and dad live, you know, we got Bella and Brunner's Pizza. So those are go-tos always, getting pizza and wings, chicken finger sub. Um, JP's is always a staple. Yep. Uh, getting, getting the combo, got combo number two. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge fan favorite. Um, so I would say probably those three places are my go-tos because I just can't wait to get pizza and wings, chicken finger subs, beef on weck. Um, the Bar Bill, there's another one. Oh, Love yeah. Yes, got to get some barbell wings and a beef on whack, and um, th those are my go-tos when I'm home, anything Buffalo style. That's awesome. Uh, Mark, you, you support them all very faithfully. <laughs> 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 is, is there one that stands out amongst all of them? Or? 
I mean, if, if we're talking wings, uh, there's there's nothing better than Barbell, in my opinion. I yeah. mean, they, <laughs> they just do it. They, yeah, everybody's good, but there's something about Barbell that's just a step above. Uh, in fact, the, the day before we, before the restaurants closed down, when we went to Orange, I called up one of my assistant coaches on the football team, and we couldn't get into East Aurora, but I said, you know, it's going to be a while before we can go and eat wings out someplace. We went up to the, the Barbell North oh, <laughs> and, and crushed some wings that night because uh, just needed to get that in before it closed down for, you know, who knows how long. <laughs> Leave it to the two of you to plan ahead like that. That's outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, right? <laughs> like, Absolutely. Everybody else is worried about toilet paper and everything, and you guys are worried about wings. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> they should be worried about the toilet paper maybe later. <laughs> huh? Hey. Live in the moment, right? Live in the moment. That's right. Live in the moment. Mark, did you have did you have like one class or one teacher that that stands out um, during your time at Hamburg as a student? Yeah, I mean, you know, as a as a phys ed teacher and a coach, it's it's easy to point to my phys ed classes. Of course, those were where I enjoyed my time most, and yeah. you know, I had a great group of guys from anywhere from Coach Colley in middle school to uh, Mr. Wellington and. Uh, I might have had him for all four years in high school. Um, but, you know, outside of phys ed, uh, Jim Harrigan, you know, it, I, I was lucky enough to have him, um, uh, you know, in 10th grade for global studies and then took his class again as a senior uh, AP Euro his, European history. Um, and part of that was I, I loved history. Um, in fact, you know, kind of little known fact here, uh, just as I was thinking of backup plans, if I don't do phys ed, history teacher was kind of my number two um and then i just decided yeah that's a lot of reading that's <laughs> but you know so that was one of the reasons i took that class but the other reason was i, I loved his class he was just awesome he, he again knew how to build relationships with his students um he knew how to make it fun but you know i came out of there and i was i was engaged i i was learning stuff and and i i just it was it was a fascinating class because he made it interesting um and Mr. Harrigan would bring it in the hockey unit too, out on the tennis courts. Well, yeah, he he would he, pop he, out when sneak, he could. He'd sneak That's out true. there in his wingtips, and he he he'd whip some whip somebody's tail. I'm telling you, he could bring yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if if I'm talking a core subject area, Mr. Harrigan was the man. He was he was great. Um, you know, he he was awesome. And there there were plenty of others that were great. Uh, you know, Mr. Mancuso and their science. Uh, you know, a lot of great ones. But you know, I, I really developed a really good relationship with with Mr. Harrigan and uh you know to this day when I see him you know we always have a great conversation he is so good he is so good uh Dave how about you was it a teacher or a class that stood out um I was I was always coming up through Mr. Orr as a uh, coach Orr you know in middle school he was just my coach I don't I never had him in class but just the relationship that we had coming up through and then you know, hitting high school, Cully and, and, and Chafee were, you know, two, two of the mentors that really, really helped to shape me. And that's to this day, I still stay close with, still communicate with, um, try to see every time I'm home. And, um, you know, they, they really had a huge impact on me. Uh, and then there's one other teacher that I, I felt that I really um, had a close bond with, and that's always looked out for me. And that was Miss Meyer. And um, she always, uh, starting from when I had her in biology class freshman year, and she just always looked out for me, or maybe a sophomore year, I don't even remember now. Um, but uh, she was someone that I was always close with and felt like I could go to when I had uh, something that, you know, I knew I could go to and not be judged and help me work through whatever it was. And, uh, you know, I appreciated that, that relationship that I was able to uh, build with her over the years as well. No kid, that's outstanding. That's really cool. Is she, is she still teaching? Yes. Oh, yeah. And okay. I, it's been a few years. I ran into her a few years ago, like driving down the road, and it was kind of like a, a wave hello, but didn't have an opportunity to communicate with her. That was the last time I saw her, and it's been a few years. So. No, there's no doubt. She's as good as they come. She is amazing at her job. Um, let's, let's close on this one here. Um, Mark, we'll let you go first, and then we'll let Dave put the finishing touches on everything. Can you – what's um, – What's maybe your one favorite on-field memory, uh, your defining moment that you just uh, cherish the most? 
<laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different directions I could go with that. Um, man, number one, you know, unfortunately, I wish I wish all of these had a happy ending. Uh, you know, where you know you obviously everybody, any athlete, wants to to win their last game on the field, and unfortunately, that's just not typically the case. Um, so it's kind of, I guess, guess happy than sad. But uh, you know, I guess there's got to be a little bittersweet in there. And I, I got to go back to as a player, um, my my senior year. Uh, playoff game at home against Grand Island where we're down 21-14 with a minute 11 left and the ball on our own 12 and I remember getting the play on the sideline from coach McFadden and for whatever reason I just I just had this like confidence that just kind of I, I felt good about it you know and, and in previous games years I might have thought differently and I get to the huddle and I'm, I'm ready to like start talking this up to the, to the huddle and the whole huddle just kind of looks at me and they're like yeah dude we, we got this yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, like everybody's feeling the same confidence. And, you know, long story short, we, we drive 88 yards and a minute 11 score as time runs out. And that was a. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. We may have to rewind the clock on that one. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Dave. Am I back? Awesome. No volume. Well, Am I back? I heard you. I heard you. Yep, yep, yep. So you, you, guys drove, you drove the field 88 yards in a little over and a minute. Field. 11, scores time runs out, and that's about as high as I've ever been on a, on a, as a player on, a, on an athletic field, um, thinking we, we got this. You know, we're, we're going someplace that Hamburg football has never gone. We're, we're getting to that sectional title game. And, uh, you know, as, as you both know it, you know, didn't end how we had wanted. We, we end up falling short and losing 21 20. Um, and, and, you know, we didn't get that storybook ending. Um, but, you know, again, unless you win the last game, that's kind of how things go for, for most teams. Um, as, a, as a coach, you know, I can tell you the greatest memory I have is uh, 2015 uh, Class A crossover game down at Gowanda against Olean. Um, both pitchers from both teams pitched just unbelievably. It, it was really, it was an amazing game. Zero, zero into the eighth inning, extra innings. It's got to be like midnight at this point. And our catcher, David Eady, comes up and just crushes one over the fence. I mean, I'm this ball just disappeared. Like, it was epic. Into the night sky, disappeared. We all hopped the fence. We dogpile. And, you know, we end up heading on to the Far West Regional and later – the, the state semifinals in Binghamton and that as a coach and maybe overall was my greatest memory as yeah. in athletics. So. That's awesome stuff, Mark. Those football teams that you played on were, were so good. So good. Um, Dave, how about you? What's your favorite on field memory? Uh, this is a tough one. You know, we, in terms of, uh, we didn't achieve as much success on the field as Mark's crew did uh, in football wise, much to my dismay. And that was kind of my number one sport. And, um, you know, I remember, I remember a big game at, uh, at West Seneca East under the lights. That was a huge one that um, just, it sticks with me to this day. We came away with a big win. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, though, a lot of the ones that sit with me are the ones that missed opportunities, um, you know, in the football field. And, you know, baseball, I, I feel like there was – just, I'm. I can't. I don't even know if I can put a, a moment on a big game, a big moment in game, where it's more so just um, some of the things we did in practice and just that camaraderie and that love of we had just being around each other on the baseball field. Um, I can't even put my finger on one moment. I just, I just remember being around and just having so much fun being around those guys, being around all of them, um, and uh, being around Chafe and and you and it just it, it just being fun and then basketball like mark the one that sticks i, I remember that big game against kensington as coach cully brought up uh, and us pulling away with that win is right missed that shot right at the end and we got away with one there and i remember the battles on court against sweet home and that moment that cully said where i got my nose busted up and i back in the game right before right before the end and we were able to pull a victory out and that's a big moment um 
But again, the one that sticks is probably the biggest game of my high school career, and that was uh, at, at Buffalo State. And um, you know, and we dropped one to the Sweet Home in overtime. Oh, and oh. I just remember every moment in that game just seeming huge, and the crowds, and um, how exciting that was. And, I, and you know, and to this day, I remember the feeling what it felt like when we lost that game right at the very end. And um, it was one of those moments that uh, it crushed me. It still does to this day. But uh, I know that they did because of how much we poured into it and how much, uh, you know, how much love we had of it and the fact that it was the last one ever for me and that the group of guys that I was around. And I was fortunate enough to be, um, you know, so many of those guys that I played with were all three-sport athletes. We, we carried through, you know, and, and many of us were playing all three together or we were playing football and basketball together or baseball and basketball together. And it was just a brotherhood. And um, those, are the, those are the things that I remember most, more so than a specific game, in-game moments. I, I remember that brotherhood and the friendships. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that I, I'll cherish forever. And, uh, and just fortunate enough that still continue to maintain those relationships with, with those individuals. I'll tell you, I vividly remember sitting in the stands at Buff State uh, oh. for that sweet home game. And – it's the best basketball game that I've ever seen there. And, you know, we happened to, you know, like you said, we weren't on the, the side we wanted to be on when it was all done, but what an unbelievable. And I just remember the, the, the crowd was so intense and the emotional swings on every possession, you know, was just unbelievable. Um, I, I do remember when I started at Hamburg, there was an urban legend about a young David Frigilletti hitting a home run over that, that green fence. And, and it's no longer there, but there was a really big green fence that was far enough out there. It wasn't really intended to be an outfield fence, um, but you decided to turn it into an outfield fence. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, this is true. We, we figured out that it was 375 down the left field line. And, um, and I was fortunate enough to, as an eighth grader, pop one over one day and, and – and some people is there, I'm sure that if, if it went under or over, but the outfielder just kind of went like one of these numbers and nobody really knew what had happened, but I, I got a hold of one that day. That's for sure. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Um, yeah. If we had tape of that soccer, we'd be playing that right now. <laughs> it, it, I don't know if they had tape back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, guys, I can't tell you how excited I was, you know, leading up to this and how special this was and, this is when we play this back, this will be fun to watch, um, you know, before Christmas. And but I think it'll also be a lot of fun to watch, you know, 20, 40 years down the road, you know, we'll look back on this. It'll be real, real good stuff. So happy holidays to you guys. Uh, enjoy that time. And uh, we'll be in touch. I'm sure. Same to you coach. Appreciate you having us on and um, hope you have a great holiday, you and your family. And uh, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing for the baseball program and Hamburg sports in general. Uh, and just kind of reconnecting with alumni and all this. And it, it, it's fun, fun to be a part of. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to continue this tradition. It sure is. It's been a fun project, man. So, yeah. And, and Mark, I'm sure we'll, we'll be kicking it in the weight room tomorrow, man. So yeah, I'll, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. And, you know, just, you know, what he said there, you know, it's, it's been fun to be able to witness it firsthand what, what, what you're doing for this program. And, you know, like I, like I said, back, yeah, I think we started our weight program when I was a senior, but we didn't know what the heck we were doing, where we've come from there. You know, your constant effort to learn and learn more and, and try new things has, you know, put us where we are today. And I, you know, it's, I, I'm learning something new from you every day, which is, is awesome. So I, you know, I couldn't be in a better position uh, coaching under somebody. So. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's likewise, man. It's likewise. It's uh, we're building it together, brother. That's for sure. You know, well, hey, you guys have a good one, and uh, I'll be looking forward to sharing this video with you guys, man. All right. Sounds good. Have a good All night. All right. Take it easy, hey, man. Hey, Coach, thanks so much. Take care. You got it, boy. See you. See you, brother. See ya.